Hi, I'm Daniel Ekes, and welcome to Food 101. Food, 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 people. Let's talk about food. To create a unique, delicious, and outstanding food, we need to know the different kind of cuisine. Last season, I talked about French cuisine, Italian cuisine, Japanese cuisine, and Spanish cuisine. And today, I have Chef Richard for my second time. Second time. Yoo-hoo! We're going to talk about what his favorite cuisine. Okay, Chefy, please do the honor. My favorite cuisine out of all four of those would be Japanese. Really? Yes. I love Japanese food. I love raw tuna, raw salmon, edamame, gyozas, um, umberries, all that kind of sushi kind of stuff. So what do you think is the difference of French cuisine and Japanese cuisine? Japanese cuisine, to me, is a lot lighter. Than French cuisine. French cuisine uses a lot of creams and butter and pastries and it's just really really rich in high fats. So you're saying that uh, Japanese cuisine is good for people you know having loose weight or... Well I'm on a keto lifestyle right now and Japanese cuisine offers a higher protein mm -hmm. than French cuisine does. Okay. Be just because of all that. But with French cuisine too, it's good in your keto diet if you stay away from the pastries. You can eat the fats, you can eat the proteins, you can eat stuff like that. But for me, I just love fish all around. So are you recommend a keto diet to everybody? No, not... I don't recommend any diet for anyone. If you're going to do something, it's got to be a lifestyle change. You can't consider it a diet because diets are... You consider it a diet, you're going to fail. That's why diet industry is a billion dollar a year industry because people fail all the time. If you're going to do something, make it a life change. Just don't consider it a diet. Very well said, Jeffy. So let's go to the pandemic. Uh, the government is issuing a mandatory vaccination. Well, mandatory vaccinations are only in certain areas. Um, my biggest thing about the vaccination is the vaccination has to reach a certain percentage point in order for there be to be um, what's it called herd immunity. Mm -hmm. If you don't reach that amount in the vaccination there will be no herd immunity and then people continue getting sick and people get continue dying and the biggest problem is a lot of population think that just because the vaccine you're free from getting COVID you're not the only thing the vaccine does is help you fight off the COVID and keep you out of the hospital that's their main purpose is to keep people out of the hospital so it doesn't um, put a lot of pressure on the health industry. So are you recommending? I recommend the shot. No if, no ands, no buts. Because me personally, I don't have the right to make someone else sick. You have the right not to get the vaccine. But me personally, I don't think you have the right to make someone that's immune compromised because you've decided not to take the vaccine so sick that they might end up dying. So how about the booster? I think the booster is a good idea because just like any other virus, it'll mutate. COVID's a virus. It's not like, you know, Something. a cut on the finger where you mm -hmm. can fix it easily. Mm -hmm. COVID is going to be around probably for the rest of our lives. And just like the flu vaccine, the flu, it 
It's like a virus. It'll change every year. It'll adapt every year. It'll grow every year. So if we want to survive as a society, I think honestly, we still have to take the boosters and take whatever vaccine we need down the road. Thank you, Chevy, for You're the welcome. second time you were my guest. And more to come, people. Thank you for listening. And see you soon.